Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. Today's video is the technical review of the new Delta Pro by EcoFlow. We'll put the product through its paces, hook up its external batteries, and talk about how to charge it with solar. So let's get to it. For those of you that have not seen the previous video that goes into detail about the specifications and real life demonstrations as to what the Delta Pro can run, be sure to check that out first. That one's going to answer all your basic questions. This video is going to focus more on the technical side. As stated in the previous video, the Delta Pro sports a 3600 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery, good for a solid 10 years of cycling. So let's head into my secret laboratory and start with the battery capacity test. Because the battery is so large and the day was so hot, I did do this capacity test using a 5000 BTU air conditioner, which takes about 450 watts, and it ran for about seven and a quarter hours. The outside ambient temperature was around 90 degrees, so a typical summer day up here in the Arizona mountains. Final results of the Delta Pro, I'm using the jacker here to power the meter, 3.29 kilowatt hours. As you can see, the Delta Pro scored a 91% on the battery capacity test. This is impressive and above average. Now let's talk about solar charging the Delta Pro. Now in the manual here, it says it will charge from 11 to 150 volts, 12 amps maximum, 1200 watts maximum. Now the problem with this is that this basically forces you to run panels in series instead of parallel because of the 12 amp maximum. I'm going to try to simulate solar here. I can't really do solar outside. It's monsoon season. We don't see the sun in July. I have this 1800 watt charger here. It's 48 volts at 37 amps feeding into this voltage booster. So it takes the 48 volts converts it to, I think 97 is the maximum. This is supposed to support 1500 watts, 30 amps maximum. And then it feeds it into the back via the XT60 input. Okay, watch here. It does go up to about a thousand for a few seconds and then it drops the 780. Now, no matter what I do, I can't get this to charge faster than 780 watts. So what we actually have going in amp wise, I'm gonna use this clamp meter and show you. We're doing 17 and a half amps. And over here, we're doing nine amps. So for whatever reason, when I convert to this higher voltage, it's not allowing me to push 12 amps out of this into the EcoFlow. See, we're doing 97 volts. So unfortunately in this situation, I have no other way to push the Delta Pro any harder. I have the biggest charger I could find, but what we actually have to do is get the input on this well over 100 volts and at that 12 amps in order to hit the 1200 watt. I just don't have anything that can do it, but we know it can at least do 800 watts of solar charging. Now I was able to confirm one thing with the solar input on this. They claim it can take 12 amps. Now with my other voltage booster, I can't get 12 amps out of it. In this case, I have the smaller one. It can't do as many watts, but it can actually handle the full 15 amp output on it. Okay, the proof is in the pudding. We got 13 and a half amps on the negative and 11 and a half amps on the positive. You take the difference between the two, that's about 12 amps. So right there, I have it set to 120 volts. You can see, as it applies low, the voltage drops. That's just the way this thing works. And that's all the best this little voltage booster can do is 700 watts, so I can't push it any harder than that. The results of the max charge rate test show that the built-in AC charger can input up to 1800 watts. The solar input can handle from 11 to 150 volts DC up to 1200 watts. I was only able to get 780 watts with my testing equipment since the EcoFlow actually limits the input to only 12 amps. And since they don't really make any high power DC chargers over 60 volts, I'm pretty certain that the limitation here is in my voltage booster. It just kills the amps as you bring up the volts. So it's just not enough to max out the Delta Pro. And I have about five or $600 worth of equipment, it still wasn't enough. So we'll move on to the next test. Now as for simultaneous charging ability, the Delta Pro can charge from solar, AC wall outlet, and gas generator all at the same time for a claimed 6,000 watts of charging. Unfortunately, I can't test that at this time. 
maybe I can put that to the test in a future video. Okay, the Delta Pro is now charging at its maximum rate from AC wall outlet. Let's see how loud it is. Around 50 decibels. So let's go ahead and switch it to low charge rate mode. Let's go ahead and flip that switch on the back. You can actually hear it got a little bit quieter. Let's see how much quieter. About two decibels. So it finally drops under 50 decibels if you put it in slow charge mode. It's actually better for the battery. If you're not in a hurry, run it in the slower charge mode. It saves the battery. It also is easier on your circuitry. You don't want to run this in 1800 watt charge mode and have other things plugged in and running on the same circuit. You're going to blow a circuit breaker. That's why they offer that feature, which I think is excellent. Next, let's review these 12 volt outputs. The Delta Pro has a 30 amp Anderson output, a regular cigarette lighter output, good for 10 amps, and then it has a pair of 3 amp 5521 ports. Let's see what the differences are between these. So I have this little testing tool plugged into the 12 volt cigarette lighter output, good for 10 amps. It is regulated at 12.8 volts. Okay, there we are at 6 amps. The voltage has dropped. Now we're at 8 amps. It's dropped to 11 volts. And at the cap of 10 amps, we're down to 10.8 volts. So while the cigarette lighter output is rated 10 amps, you can expect it's going to drop the voltage down into the upper 10 volt range. That's not necessarily a good thing. It means they don't have very strong regulation circuitry on the cigarette lighter output. Now I suspect that this 30 amp Anderson is going to be a different story and let me explain why. So first from the cigarette lighter output, we figured out this is regulated at 12.8 volts. However, we're unplugged into the Anderson output, which is a 30 amp, and I measure it with my meter. It says it's regulated at 12.6 volts. So there's actually two different circuits in this. There's one for the 30 amp output and one for the 10 amp output. Now I know many of you are already gonna ask me, what about the three amp outputs, the 5521s? Are they matched with the cigarette lighter output or are they matched with the Anderson output? Well, we can tell just by looking at the voltage. They're matched with the cigarette lighter output at 12.8 volts. So you have one circuit running the cigarette lighter output and the 5521s, and then you have a separate 12 volt circuit running the 30 amp Anderson output. Now that's different because I've never seen anybody actually have two different voltages on two different 12 volt outputs unless it's one's regulated and one's not, but that's not the case here. Both of these are regulated, and I know this for a fact because I ran this down 10%. I ran it from 85% to 74%. The voltages did not change at all. So if they were not regulated, the voltages would have went down. It would have went down under load, which they did not. So we know they're both regulated at different voltages for some reason. Why they didn't just do 12.8 volts across the board, now here's something fun. I have the 5521 output hooked up into this. These outputs are rated at three amps. So 12.8 volts, let's see how many amps we can pull. We're at five amps, six, nine, 10. So even though the outputs are only designed for three amps, I'm pulling 10. So keep that in mind. You can actually pull way more than what they're rated. I wouldn't recommend it for long periods of time. I would say that you can have no problems running a 60 watt refrigerator off of one of these adapters. Because what I'm doing is I'm using one of these adapters here. You can get these on my website. It allows you to turn a 5521 plug into a cigarette lighter so that you can plug refrigerators and things or other 12 volt stuff in to what most people think are useless outputs. But with these adapters, you can actually have three cigarette lighter outputs on most solar generators, which makes them very useful. For this next test, we're gonna break the space-time continuum. Great Scott. Because I'm going to power the output from this into an inverter that's gonna go back into charging this. So basically I'm making a loop and there's a reason why I'm doing this. We're gonna go ahead and test the 30 amp Anderson output on the Delta Pro. And in order for me to push 30 amps, I need a really large load. Giggity, giggity, giggity. And that's gonna be from this Best Tech inverter. This can do 1200 watts. So no problem maxing out this port, which according to the book says it can handle 378 watts maximum. That's gonna be at 30 amps, 12.6 volts. So let's go ahead and run this test and see exactly 
How much power can you get out of this Anderson port? The number we're looking at here is this bottom number. That's the amount of power coming out of the Anderson port. Okay, we passed 300 watts. Over here it says 200 watts, which is strange. And that's where it shuts down. Take two, let's see if we can narrow down exactly how much power we can get out before it shuts down. And that's it. So basically, as soon as we exceed about 300 watts on this meter, we lose the inverter. So with my current equipment, I can pull about 300 watts out of the Anderson port and then the Delta Pro shuts it down, cuts it off. I have to actually reset this 12 volt. I have to turn it off and back on again in order for this meter to come back on. So the Delta Pro is definitely shutting down the output or somewhere around 300 watts. So keep that in mind if you buy this and plan to actually expect 30 amps out of here. It looks like it's closer to around 25 amps. USB check. We're going to make sure that these 100 watt power delivery outputs are actually putting out 100 watts. Sometimes they say they do 100 and they really don't. Now I do have a special, this is like a gold plated 5 amp USB-C cable. This is designed for high power throughput. If you don't use the right cable, you're not going to get all the power out of this output, so make sure you use the right cable. I do have these on my Amazon page. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the laptop. Now this laptop, now I showed you guys this laptop last time. It actually has USB charging ability, so you can actually charge it with a USB-C cord at 100 watts. So this is the first device I've ever owned that actually has 100 watt USB-C charging. And there you have it. It's charging at 98 watts. It makes that a super cool ability to be able to charge your laptop directly from DC. It's very efficient. You don't even need to run the inverter or use your power brick or nothing like that directly from USB to your laptop. So you're charging a DC battery with a DC battery. Almost no loss. Most efficient way to charge your laptop, especially if you're in a grid down, a power out situation, or you're boondocking and you're charging this with solar, every watt counts. And by the way, I got several comments saying that this laptop in no way could run nine or 10 hours on its internal battery because it's a gaming laptop and it has a high-end graphics card. Go ahead and look up the reviews for this. I'll put the link in the description if you're interested in this laptop. Look up the reviews. This has been tested many times to have a nine plus hour battery life. So it is absolutely possible. And my numbers before when I was showing you in my last video, how long will this laptop run off of this? Now, some of you were like, well, because it only run like 17 hours or 18 hours or something off the Delta, there's no way that the internal battery, which is much smaller, could run it for nine or 10 hours. But you have to remember the calculation that was coming up on the screen is actually calculating charging the battery and running the laptop at the same time. So if you're in a low power state, the battery's already topped up. The amount of power coming out is minimal. In fact, right now the laptop's charged up and it's showing zero watts. In fact, on my little meter down here, it says 0 0.02 amps. So it's barely sipping power. In fact, it's so low that it's not even showing up on this meter. It actually says now it'll run for seven days. So now I don't know if it actually run the laptop that long for real. I'm not going to take a week and find out. But this battery would certainly power this laptop for several days without any kind of problems. That's for the pure side wave check under load. We're running a 2900 watt load. Let's look at the sine wave. Looks perfect. We still have a good voltage at 118 volts, 60 hertz. All right, we're going to demonstrate the feature in the manual here on section 3.9 X boost. I'm going to describe this feature to you how it works on the Delta Pro. So you can see here in the book it says, appliances with voltage protection, such as precise instruments, are not supported. This is more suitable for heating devices. So what X-Boost does, it actually lowers the voltage of the output of the inverter so that you can run more amps. So you're not really running more than 3600 watts, which is the output of this inverter, but you're sort of cheating the system. It allows you to run more amps by dropping the voltage. This is going to show you the voltage coming out. So typically it should be 120 volts, which is what you get from your household wall outlet. How X-Boost works is it drops that voltage as you increase the wattage of your appliances. So on the floor, I have a heater and a hairdryer. And then of course I have the solar degenerator. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat up on this gradually until we get to 3,600 watts. And then I'm gonna try to exceed that 3,600 watts. And you're gonna see on here, it'll still say 3,600, but then we'll see the voltage drop on the meter. And I'll show you how this works, and then I'll explain to you why you shouldn't use it for a lot of appliances. Let's go ahead and kick on the solar degenerator and watch the voltage as I turn up the heat. I'm gonna turn up the heat using this dial. Okay, we're at 3,400 watts, 35, and then you'll see it stops at 36. And as I increase the heat, the voltage drops. So now I have the solar degenerator turned all the way up. So this is all the way up. You can see we're down to 106 volts, but the wattage is still around 3600. And as you can see, it's still holding 60 hertz frequency. Now the problem with this X-Boost feature, which is exclusive to EcoFlow, is that when it drops the voltage like that, it could actually damage your appliances. You would never want to have, say, a computer plugged into this or anything with a computer chip, like a microwave or an induction cooker or anything like that, which has a computer chip in it, because when you lower the voltage, those computer chips rely on any certain amount of voltage to work. So when you drop that voltage too low, they start getting confused and not work properly. And in some cases, you can actually destroy your appliances. You'd never want to run an air conditioner on this either in X-Boost mode because lowering that voltage is going to make the compressor run slow, make the motors run slow, and that can actually destroy an air conditioner. So we need to go into the app for EcoFlow and turn off X-Boost and then see what happens when I throw all the same stuff at it. Inside the app, you have the ability to turn AC and DC on. It tells you up here how much power you're actually using. Then there's all a bunch of extra settings. Like if we want to go in and turn off X Boost, we go into AC, and right there you see it says X Boost. So let's go ahead and turn that off. This here allows you to adjust how much AC power you want to charge with. By default, it is set to 400 watts. So we're going to go ahead and leave that at 400. You can adjust the frequency and voltage here. In battery, you can adjust how much do you want the EcoFlow Delta Pro to charge. So say you only want to charge at 80%, you can go ahead and set it on 80%. Now why you might want to do this is to extend the battery life because it's a lot better for batteries to not be charged to 100% all the time. Charge to 80% make the battery last a lot longer. System settings allows you to set the standby time, how long you want the LCD to be on, if you want the beeps or not, and what kind of temperature units you want to use, and firmware, which I believe you can actually update the firmware from here as well. And that's really all there is to it. So now we turned off X-Boost, let's see what happens if we pass 3600 watts on this inverter. So we're going to do exactly like we did before. As soon as I hit the AC inverter on, the hair dryer and heater on the floor are going to kick on, then I'm going to go ahead and max this out max heat, max power, and see what happens once we pass 3600. Okay, let's apply power. Oh, it's allowing me to exceed 3600 watts now. But notice the voltage isn't really dropping that much. Okay, we're at 4,000 watts. Okay, I now have the solar degenerator maxed, 4,100 watts. How long is it gonna take it? And there we go, it only took about 30 seconds. Interestingly enough, the fans on the inverter shut off pretty quickly. So as soon as the load was dropped or disconnected for overloading the inverter, the fan shut off. So let's try that again, but let's do it at 4,000. I think we were pushing it just a little too hard there. Let's see how long we can run it at 4,000 watts. All right. Right after about three minutes and 15 seconds, it finally shut down at 4,000 watts. That's seriously impressive. I've never seen an inverter do this. So around a full three minutes at 400 watts over as recommended rating. So final results of the inverter test. This is a fantastic, very stable inverter. Has no issues with overheating. Very strong sine wave even at 3,000 watts. So if you're looking for a top-notch inverter, you found it right here. So what about inverter noise? 
I'm currently running a load on the Delta Pro. I'm about a meter away with this microphone. Let's see what it says. Around 56 and a half decibels. So it's not necessarily quiet, but it's not disturbingly noisy. It sounds like a computer processing graphics or playing a video game or something. It's, it has about the same noise level as a PC computer doing work. All right, we got one more test here. That is the amp interference test. This is gonna let you know how clean is the inverter? Is the output going to interfere with an amplifier? Like if you're a ham radio operator, or if you're gonna use something like this to power an amplifier on a stage or whatever, you wanna know, is it gonna make a bunch of noise? Is it gonna get a lot of noise out of the amplifier? So let's find out. So all I have to do is power it on, all the knobs on this amp are cranked all the way up. So we're gonna hear if there's any interference. Once I turn it on, I get a pretty loud pop. All right, sounds pretty good. Now here's the ultimate test, putting the microphone there. If you can hear, the inverter on the EcoFlow is high quality. It does not provide any kind of interference noise whatsoever out of an amplifier. So this is perfect to use for ham radio or amp operations. Does the Delta Pro have pass-through charging? I literally had dozens asking if this had that feature. If it didn't, this thing would have been ejected over my balcony and I never would have released a video on it. This thing costs several thousand dollars. Of course, it has pass-through charging. In fact, it has a built-in UPS with UPS relay. That means it has an uninterruptible power supply built in. So you can keep your stuff plugged into the inverter and if the power goes out, and this is plugged into your wall outlet or whatever, power goes out, this will continue to power your loads up to a certain amount. If you plug this into the wall, it actually will take power from the wall, pass it through, not charge or affect the battery, and just basically pass it out through these outlets in the front. So we're gonna go ahead and test this. I'm gonna show you something very interesting that I found out about this product that's different from how Blue Eddy does it. First things first, I set this to 65% charge, so the battery will not charge at this point. I do have it plugged into the wall, but it's not charging because the battery's at 82. So I told the battery don't charge, because this is how we're gonna test the inverter with the UPS relay built in. I have a heater on the floor set on max, and I'm gonna use the solar degenerator to crank this up, and we're gonna watch those meters here, and I'll explain what's happening. So right now it says about 1400 watts are coming in and around 1400 watts are coming out. Now that makes sense. We can verify here it says about 1330 watts. So what this means is that power is coming in from the wall, passing through the delta using that bypass relay and the power is coming out of these outlets. It's just like a power strip. So pretend the Delta Pro is not even here. It's acting like a power strip plugged into the wall. Now watch what happens if I exceed 2,000 watts. Now we know this has a 3,600 watt inverter. We know it can easily handle 4,000 watts. So you would think when you put a load on this higher than 2,000 watts, it would kick over and use the internal battery. Watch what happens. So we're gonna watch the meter while I apply some solar degenerator. We're at 2,000 watts. Now the problem is, is that it's actually pulling 2,000 watts from my wall outlet, which is maxing out my wall outlet. And it knows that. So watch, ha watch what happens when we go higher. Okay, at 2,200 watts, we get an overload and the inverter actually shuts off. Now you're probably asking me, why did it overload and the inverter shut off? This has a 3,600 watt inverter. Why did it shut off at 2,200 watts? Well, it's very simple. The way the UPS is in this, if you have this plugged in at all, and it's in UPS mode, you're limited to what you can pull from your wall outlet. So my wall outlet's 20 amps. This is kind of set for 20 amps, so it knows not to pull more than 20 amps from my wall outlet because it'll blow the breaker and all the lights will go out and that'll be the end of the video. But in this case, it's actually detecting the 20 amps and shutting off the inverter and then breaking the power going to the loads. So that means anytime you have the Delta Pro plugged in, that it's gonna be in that UPS mode. And that means as long as it's plugged in, you can't pull more than 
2200 watts in this case it might be different in your country and they might change this amount before the final version comes out that you get because remember this is still a very very late prototype this is practically what's going into production with a few minor changes. If you plan to keep this thing plugged in all the time to your wall and act like a UPS, you can't pull 3600 watts from this. So you have to unplug it first. You'll hear the click of the relay turning off. And then the inverter that's built in kicks in and allows you to do the 3600 watts. This is completely different on how Blue Eddy does it. Blue Eddy has a very complex way they handle it. So if you exceed the amount of power that's coming into the wall, it actually switches over to internal inverter, continues to power your load while charging the battery at the same time. It's actually super cool. Uh, the Blue Eddy EP500 is a lot more complicated than this when it comes to the UPS feature. That's actually designed to be connected to your house and power your house. This really isn't, although it can be. Next on the agenda is what EcoFlow calls their smart battery. It's a 3600 watt hour, just like they claim right here in a book, it says approximately 60 pounds. We're gonna weigh it because it feels way heavier than 60 pounds. See right there under specifications, approximately 60 pounds. So there's the real weight, 83.6 pounds. Whoa, this is heavy. There's that word again, heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? EcoFlow sent me two of their smart batteries to hook up to the Delta Pro for testing. So each one of the batteries has this little compartment where it stores this big honking battery cable. So it just clicks in, just like an EV car charger, clicks into the back on each side, just like that. And then the other end plugs into the back. Just like that. Then once you have your batteries hooked up with the cables, turn on the power to the Delta Pro. Do not do this if it is plugged into the wall or charging. They tell you in the book, while this is charging, do not hook up or unhook the extra batteries. These guys come on automatically. You don't even have to turn them on. Now, as soon as I turn this on, it actually started to charge from these external batteries. It seems like it's sending power to this one to try to bring up the level to match the other ones. The other ones are charged at 100%. So you're probably wondering, how do you actually charge the smart batteries? Well, there's really only one way to do it. You have to charge the Delta Pro. And you can charge it with solar, you can charge it with a gas or propane generator using their smart generator, or you can charge it from AC wall, which is what I'm doing right now. As soon as you plug it in, the Delta Pro will charge, and then the batteries that are connected will also charge. As you can see, they are both charging right now, somewhere around 400 watts each. And say you want to charge this slower. Say you don't want to run this at its full 1800 watt charging. So you want to extend the life of the batteries by doing a trickle charge. All I have to do is flip the switch in the back and it will lower the amount of charging speed depending on what you have in the app. So with the EcoFlow Smart Extra Battery, you can triple the amount of power that you get out of your Delta Pro. Over 10,000 watt hours or 10 kilowatt hours of power total. If you watch my last video on how long things can run on the Delta Pro, you can triple those numbers if you actually decide to get two of these smart extra batteries. So what do I like about the Delta Pro? This thing is a friggin' monster, okay? There's nothing you can throw at it that it won't run. It literally makes it the most powerful solar generator ever made to date. It can even run 220 to 240 volt appliances with their double voltage hub, and the fact that it can be expanded to over 10 kilowatt hours using their smart extra batteries also makes it one of the largest. Everything works as it says, and the power output is strong and clean. It charges super fast from AC wall outlet, in fact, probably the fastest in the world. And I do like the option to slow it down if you're not in a hurry or if you want to extend the life of the battery. One of the problems I ran to with the original Delta product was that I was at camp and I was trying to charge it using a long extension cord. Because the long extension cord only allows so much power through it, the Delta kept shutting down. I could not charge the thing from an extension cord. I'd walk up to my friend's house and plug it in and it would blow their circuit breaker. Finally, the Delta Pro allows you inside the app to adjust exactly how many watts you want to pump into this while you're charging it from the wall or from a generator. Or say you want to charge this from an inverter in a van or RV, 
you can actually tell it, I want less power to go from my inverter into this to charge it up, and that's gonna solve a lot of problems. With the original Delta, it was full speed or bust, and it caused a lot of problems for a lot of folks. I'm glad EcoFlow finally fixed this problem. So with this amount of power and a pair of their smart extra batteries, you can run practically any appliance overnight, and that includes powering an RV roof air conditioner, a first for any solar generator. All right, that takes me to what I don't like about the Delta Pro, and I think I made that pretty clear already. The biggest shortcoming of the Delta Pro is its hefty weight. At 100 pounds, most folks just can't lift this thing by themselves, which puts a damper on things like moving it up and down stairs, across gravel or other terrain, or putting it in your vehicle or RV for the fascinating EV charging that this provides. In fact, it's so difficult to move around, it makes it a challenge to even show you what it can all do is because my appliances are spread over multiple buildings with dirt and gravel in between inch one. So unless I get somebody to help me carry this from building the building to show you all the stuff it can do, I can't really do it. So that just gives you a, a clue as to what something that just weighs a little bit too much can be problematic. So in a power outage, I'm probably not gonna run for this first unless I'm up here, obviously, but I'm gonna be forced to use smaller 2000 watt solar generators and put them in different rooms rather than to try to move this thing around to different parts of my property. Now for some of you, that's not gonna be an issue. Some of you are just gonna put this in one place and let it sit there for a power outage and, and that's it. Another thing, EcoFlow fibbed a little bit about the weight of their smart extra batteries. They claim in the manual 60 pounds, but in fact, they weigh over 83 pounds. So be sure that you can handle moving around all this bulk before purchasing any of these extra batteries. And this brings me to one other gripe, which I think EcoFlow could have solved very easily, but for some reason didn't. And that is the solar charging on this. While 1200 watts of solar is good, it's not great because this has a very large 3600 watt hour battery. The smaller, more portable upcoming Blue Eddy AC200 Max and AC300 charge much faster from solar and can take 1400 to 2400 watts, respectively. The current Blue Eddy EP500 Pro, which is probably the closest direct competitor to this, can take 2400 watts of solar. EcoFlow should really have offered at least 2,000 watts of solar charging for this model, seeing how hefty it is. Since these are touted as home backup solutions, in a long-term off-grid situation with a pair of their smart extra batteries, 1,200 watts of solar is not nearly enough to charge all that in a single day. Fortunately, 1,200 watts of solar is enough to run a room air conditioner, space heater, or refrigerator indefinitely, as long as the sun shines, and will be plenty for the average user. But just keep in mind, if you get this with the two extra batteries, it's gonna be 10 kilowatt hours of power, and it's simply not gonna charge from 1200 watts of solar in one day. Now you could certainly work around this by using a gas generator. In fact, they do offer a gas generator, which I'm going to be reviewing in the future. So even though 1200 watts of solar might not be enough, you could start the gas generator and charge it with that. But that kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? Product price, everybody wants to know what this thing costs. If you wanna know what it costs, don't ask me in the comments. Just click the link in the description below this video and you'll see what the current price is today. Tomorrow it could change. As I mentioned in the previous video, the way Kickstarter works, the prices increase over time. That means the best deal is happening right now. So who's the main competitor to the Delta Pro? The Bloody EP500 is probably the closest single direct competitor to this as it weighs about 140 pounds, offers split phase 240 volts when combining two together, same as the EcoFlow Delta Pro. Other than that, there really isn't other competition in this segment. Now, some may argue that Titan is, but since you can't even buy one this year, who cares? So who's this product aimed at? It's obviously aimed at homeowners and maybe folks with large RVs that require backup power or are boondocking or living off the grid. You're gonna need a strong back or two people to move it around. Fortunately, with the remote control and wireless app support, you won't have to move it around often. 
Now, if you want to see examples of what the Delta Pro can do, be sure to watch my previous video, which I'll link up here and put in the description. As for recommended solar for the Delta Pro, I do recommend just getting three of their 400 watt portable panels as part of the campaign package, especially if you plan to set up the Delta Pro somewhere temporary or plan to move it around a lot. Those portable panels are going to be worth the expense. Now, none of the bundles on their campaign page include three solar panels, which is strange. I figured they would, but what you can do is you can order this with one panel, and then when you go to checkout, it gives you the option to add as many solar panels as you want. So you can add two more panels to that, and that'll max out the 1200 watt solar on this. Now, if you plan to keep the Delta Pro in more of a stationary position, or you're just going to use it for home backup and not move it around a lot, I do recommend just go in for the 200 watt rich solar or 180 watt Bouge RV rigid glass panels that I have on my website, hobotech.tv slash Amazon. I'll have a link in the description below. They cost about a third of the price. So you can actually buy a lot more solar for a lot less money, but those panels are big and heavy and made of glass. So they're kind of designed for more of a permanent installation or semi-permanent installation. Fixed location, you probably want glass panels because most of them have 20, 25, or 30 year warranties. And if you're gonna buy something like this and expect it to last 10 years, you probably want your solar panels to last 10 years too. So if you're interested in the Delta Pro or the solar panels I mentioned, links are in the description below in this video. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Everything about the EcoFlow Delta Pro is big. It's got a big battery, a big inverter, and it also comes with some big solar panels. I can't touch end to end with my arms. This thing's huge. We have no sun here during monsoon season in Arizona. We'll go weeks at a time and never see the sun. So no solar panel test today. I don't even know if I got that folded up right. It's, that's all covered in mud now. No resale value here. RV Golf Guy, Ant Medic Audio Repair, Andrew Vaughn, Roger Cardano, Brian Weavers, Johnson, Jason Soroka.